Thank God this morning. We appreciate you, appreciate the, the church, amen. Uh, we ask you to be much in prayer uh, this week as we uh, get back into the word of God and pray that God would bless and touch, amen. Now, there was a word uh, last week in the reading of God's word that I uh, misrepresented. I didn't mean to misrepresent it, but I did. And uh, if I can find it right real quick. And uh, uh, the scripture, give me just a moment. I'm going to take just a moment of time. I want to correct this. And it, it wasn't because that uh, uh, I, did it, I did it ignorantly. Uh, because these times that my mind and my eyes uh, don't agree together sometimes. <laughs> and uh, we was preaching on uh, the weapons of warfare uh, last week and the message and and. Uh, as we got uh, into those verses of scripture, uh, I misrepresented one of the words over there, and uh, and uh, for the life of me, I can't remember which one it was. But if you was following along uh, last week, it was it, I did it ignorantly, and if it changed that thought of that message or that thing uh, in your mind in your heart, uh, God knows. But when I began to study it back out, the word that I used over there. Uh, was indignation and uh, uh, that I replaced there and I didn't do it intentionally and uh, uh, but it pretty much means the same thing the word that was in that verse of scripture because the, the Bible tells us over in the book of Genesis in chapter 6 that the thoughts and the intents of man's heart are only evil continually and the message was concerning those evil things and uh, uh, the things that the scripture I was reading in and everything and friend we warfare now last week I would be lying to you to tell you that it was an easy message to preach it wasn't uh, I fought with an opposing power the whole time I was there and, uh, in that message and everything and it wasn't an opposing power coming from the people uh, this opposing power that I was fighting was coming from Satan and anytime you begin to reveal Satan and his works uh, 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 I, any man of God will tell you uh, that it's not easy, amen. Uh, but this morning we want to get into the book of Titus just for a little while and uh, God began to bless and touch our heart this week and I praise his wonderful name uh, in these things. So if you'll turn with us to the book of Titus chapter two, uh, we want to uh, get into these verses of scripture here by the help of God, amen. Titus chapter two, when you found your place, please stand with us this morning. We'll honor the word of God as we get into this. Amen. Start reading with me in verse one. It says, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, uh, that the aged men, uh, that the aged men uh, be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity and in patience, that the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, uh, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach uh, the young women to be sober, uh, to love their husbands, to uh, love their children, uh, to, to be, be discreet, chest, keep, keepers of home, good, obedient to their own husband, that the word of God uh, be not blameful, uh, but be not blasphemed, Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works uh, in doctrine, showing uncorruptibleness, gravity, uh, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, uh, that uh, he that is of the contrary part uh, may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort. Uh, uh, servants to be obedient to their own master and to please them well in all things, uh, not answering again, uh, not prolonging, but showing uh, in all good fidelity uh, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. For by for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly, righteously, uh, and glory and, and godly in this present world. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you, Lord, and I ask you, God, to bless, Father. 
God, in these words, Lord, God, give us, Lord, that unction, God, from the other side, God, that the Holy Spirit, Lord, might be glorified uh, in those things that are said. Father, and we'll praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated as we begin to look into this. I want to preach, amen, out of verse 7 for a little while. It says, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptiveness, gravity, and sincerity, amen. And the, the title of the message this morning is a pattern of good works, a pattern of good works, amen. When I begin to look into these verses of scripture and begin to think about uh, this pattern of good works, amen. Uh, you and I today in the flesh, in the flesh, and I'm talking about the spiritual man that lives on the inside of you and I. The Bible says over there, if you're born of God, uh, the inward man sinneth not, according to the book of John, over there, first, second John, uh, it says that the inward man sinneth not. It's pure, it's holy, it's just, it's righteous before God, amen. It's born of God. It's uh, when Jesus sees uh, the inward man that's inside of me, and that, that, that you're not seeing this morning, but when he sees that inward man inside of me, he sees the blood of Jesus. That's what he sees this morning. And because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and everything up there, uh, he sees me as being forgiven. Jesus come and hug on the cross of Calvary, friend, that all sin uh, might be forgiven. That's past sin, that's present sin, and that's future sin uh, that will uh, in, in our lives. Amen. I would be lying to you this morning to tell you that I sin not. I sin and come short of the glory of God. Uh, every day, amen. I find myself in an old-fashioned altar continually crying out, oh God, uh, forgive me of those evil thoughts. Oh God, forgive me of those lustful thoughts. Oh God, forgive me uh, of what I might have said to somebody that would not, might not have been exactly right uh, or all of these things. You know, uh, you say, do you have to do that all the time, preacher? I say, I sure do, amen. You know, uh, God didn't give me a special place to get in uh, and everything, and be exempt from all of those things. My mind, uh, most of the time, is like a trash can. Uh, now it's because it's full of garbage. I mean, it's just simple as that. And everything, uh, down through my process of my lifetime, uh, I've allowed a lot of things to come in uh, uh, through my eyes and through my uh, mind and through listening to stuff and to seeing things and hearing things and all of the, a lot of the ungodly things that are out here in the world. And everything. But you know what? This morning, I'm saved by God's marvelous grace. God gloriously forgave me uh, of those things. Amen. But that sword uh, that, that comes with that, in other words, those thoughts and those, uh, those things like that right there, they haunt me daily all along the way. Amen. And uh, those things, if we're not real careful, uh, and everything will, will distort our pattern. Amen. Uh, now, what is a pattern this morning? All right, I, I'm going to hold the lid up off of this box right here just for a minute. This has got a cross on it uh, and everything. And, and the pattern that you see on the, on, on the ground here is the pattern of a cross. Amen. Uh, and you and I to be the pattern of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lifestyle and the things that we do. And we're the pattern in our lives and everything. This is piece of scripture said over there, let a man what? Deny himself and to take up our cross, amen, and follow him. And you and I today, uh, as cross-bearing Christians today, that means that you know we're to set an example to be an example out there before a lost and dying world uh, in good works and in, in, in our speech and in our language uh, and, and all things over there. And we'll deal with that as we get down to it uh, and everything. But I begin to think about the pattern uh, that God would have us to reflect. Amen. Uh, one of, in the verse, in the first Corinthians chapter eight, uh, in verse three, uh, you read this verse of scripture and you've heard me quote this several times down through the last few months. But the Bible says, if any man love God, the same is known of him. In other words, if you love God this morning uh, and he's your savior, uh, you cannot hide God. Simple as that. You can't hide him. Uh, uh, he's going to he's going to stick out somewhere or another. He's going to show himself uh, to a lost and dying world. Why? Uh, because you're a vessel. We're a conduit. 
and everything, uh, th that the power of God might flow through us. Where is it going to? Out into a lost and dying world. Amen. Uh, we're a picture. Uh, we're a reflection or, or, or whatever. And we're to reflect what? Uh, the word of God. And if we're reflecting the word of God, there's some simple gospel over there in the book of Matthew over there. And he said that let our words become as if it were the gospel of God. In other words, and uh, you say, do you, do you fit that bill, preacher, all the time? I'll have to raise my hand and say, I fail God miserably at times. At times, I do. I fail God miserably at everything. Uh, you know, well, what causes you to fail, to, to fail God? Amen. This flesh that you're looking at here this morning, that's what it is. I'm living in a body of flesh. Paul penned in Romans chapter 7 over there, uh, over there, and I thank God, and you've heard me say this many be the times already. I thank God for Romans chapter 7, amen, because God tells us in his precious word uh, that Paul was a man just like me. Uh, and, and Paul was a man just like you this morning uh, and everything. God used that man greatly in the day and time that he lived to write these letters and these epistles. This is a letter from Paul to the church at Titus uh, over there and he's telling him more than likely it's a prison letter. Paul was in prison most of his, uh, most of his ministry uh, and everything. Uh, the reason why was I think God had to slow him down and everything. I mean, when he got saved that day on the road of, to, to, of Damascus going there, he had the papers in his pocket uh, to go persecute those that were in that way. In other words, what way is that? In the way of Jesus Christ, it was under the blood, under the uh, the forgiveness of God, amen, uh, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that new and living way uh, that you and I, it's the uh, the day of grace that we live in. They, they had, a, uh, and Paul was persecuting that. See, he was old school. Uh, Paul could have sat on the seat of Sanhedrin court over there. Uh, Paul was a, a religious fanatic, if you want to call him that. Uh, I mean, he, I mean, he had spent his life. Uh, he studied under the seat, uh, under the feet of Gamal over there, one of the, uh, the great doctors or lawyers or whatever you want to call of the law and the giving of the law and the, and the mosaic, uh, uh, all of the things. Paul knew it inside and out, up and down, forward and backward. Paul knew it. And he was zealous. Why? Uh, because uh, this new and living way that come in had turned their world upside down. Uh, amen. Jesus come uh, not as a triumph, triumph uh, uh, warrior on a white stallion uh, with a sword in his hand and everything to deliver them out from under the bondage uh, of, of that part of the world over there at the time, the Roman Empire that had them in bondage and everything. But he came in uh, over there in meekness and love Riding on an ash cold, amen. Preaching to love your enemies. Uh, pray for them that persecute you uh, and despitefully use you and say all manners of evil against you falsely, amen. Uh, he, you know, he, he was teaching a way of love. And that love that God gave through his son Jesus down here in this world has become the gospel of the Lord God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, now fear will bring you to the knowledge of sin. Fear will bring you to the knowledge of Christ through the word. Amen. Conviction touches your heart and shows you your need for a savior and shows you lost and undone without a savior. Amen. And because you fear a place called hell, friend, uh, you'll cry out to God when God brings begins to bring you to that point in your life uh, that you need a savior, friend. Uh, he'll bring you that through fear uh, of that awful place called hell. You say, preacher, does hell exist? Yes, friend. Just as sure as heaven exists, it exists. A few weeks ago, we preached over there about two different men that one of them went to heaven and one of them went to hell. Uh, but there for a little while, uh, paradise uh, and hell was both in the heart of the earth before Jesus went down in there and delivered uh, those souls that was bound in, in paradise down there that was safe in Abraham's bosom. And for a little period, for a period of time, they was they could look backwards and forwards, and there was a great gulf fixed in him and everything. But Jesus came, uh, friend, and He bridged that gulf so that you and I uh, would not have to go to that place called hell, Amen. Uh, that we've got a place 
us through the Lord Jesus Christ that we could go to be with him on high. The Bible says it's appointed man once to die and after this the judgment you and I friend to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If you die in Christ Jesus friend the first thing you'll see when you when your last breath leaves you and your heart stops down here you'll behold him for yourself and not another. You'll see him because he died for you and because he loves you. Amen. But as I got into these verses of scripture here, she says, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. It doesn't take long to develop a pattern. Now, there's a lot of people out here. Let's just go ahead and look at this right here just for a minute. Let me flip back over to these verses of scripture. Uh, let's look at that. Uh, as I begin to look at that, he said, in all things, Showing thyself a pattern uh, of what of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptibleness, uh, gravity, and sincerity. If you're out in public and you meet somebody, maybe a, a salesman or a, a, or somebody in a grocery store or somebody out there working or or whatever there. If you're working or maybe you take a new job and and just in a little while, it don't take you but just a minute to pick out people. Uh, what type of people they are. You're going to have people over here that's ungodly, and, and, and that ungodly person out over there, uh, uh, out of that ungodly person, there'll be ungodly stuff flowing out of their mouth. You, uh, you'll hear cursing, vulgarness, all kinds of old crazy junk and, and everything like that right there. You'll hear blaspheming. They'll blaspheme the very name of God. Uh, you'll hear uh, all these things here. They can't get along with their neighbor. They're all time a warring with somebody uh, and everything. Like that. I mean, all of those things are prevalent. From uh, I'm talking about ungodly people, people that's not been saved by God's marvelous grace. Uh, 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 those people that are out there in the world that we work with and, we, and we're around continually. But then just in a little while, you'll find somebody on the job that not saying a whole lot. You don't hear them talk a whole lot. And when you do hear them talk, you don't hear nothing coming out of their mouth that's vulgar. You don't hear anything coming out of their mouth that's, uh, that's not the truth. Uh, you don't hear any stuff coming out of their mouth that, uh, and everything that, 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 that become, you know, that's ungodly. You know, you don't hear a lot of that stuff. And everything, and just in a few minutes, uh, when you get a change and everything like that, that person, if, they, if they're paying attention to you, like you're paying attention to them, and everything, when you get a moment of privacy, in other words, or you get, you're off away from uh, the ugliness of the world just in a minute, they'll speak to you about the love of God, and you'll speak to them about the love of God, and guess what? The Spirit bears witness with your spirit, and you're hooked up with them immediately. Immediately. Why? What is that? That's that pattern. That's that pattern that makes you and I uh, a child of God. That's that pattern that makes uh, you be here this morning. That shows forth the faithfulness and the gravity and the sincerity of your life and everything. If you didn't love God down in the deep in the hole of your heart, well, where would you be this morning? Think about that. If you didn't love God and, and, and Jesus wasn't a part of your life, and I hope and pray that everybody here knows the Lamb of God as their Savior. And friend out there in the world, if you don't know the Lamb of God as your Savior, amen, you're fitting in a crowd out there that's ever ungodly thing that you can think of. I mean, I mean, the thoughts and the imaginations of, the, of, the, of those people are only evil continually. Now, I said my thoughts and the intents of my heart sometimes is only evil continually. See, one of the good thing about the difference between that fellow out there that's lost and undone without a Savior and me that's saved by God's marvelous grace is I've got somebody fighting for me. I've got somebody that's already taken my, away my sins. I've got somebody that's sitting at the right hand of God. His name is Jesus. And the Bible says that he ever maketh intercession. He's interceding for me uh, and everything. Though my thoughts and mind sometimes is evil uh, and everything like that right there in this flesh uh, wants to get a hold of stuff that it ain't supposed to get a hold of and wants to do things that it ain't supposed to do and he wants to say things uh, out of maybe... Uh, uh, being angry and a uh, rage or something other like that right there. Friend out there in the world, let me ask you something. 
in the last four years or five years almost now, how many of you have been angry because of what's going on in this world? How many of you have been disillusioned by falseness and stuff in our, in, in our media? How many of you have been uh, turned and, and got to the point where that you, I mean, you literally was in a rage on everything? I'm talking to Christian people right now and, and lost people also. But that's, friend, we've got somebody that's making intercession for you and I. Amen. We've got somebody out there that wants you and I to have a pattern of good works. He wants us to refrain from those things. He wants us to live godly. He's soberly, vigilant, uh, truthful out there before a lost and dying world that they might what? That they might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. Go back to the book of Matthew chapter five. You can read that over there. Simple gospel. Uh, amen. Uh, and if, they, if we'll show forth, in other words, it says there in six, seven, eight, somewhere right along in there, uh, or maybe it's, maybe it's on further down a little bit. He said over there, he said, to let our light what? So shine. But what? Before what? A lost and dying world. He said, a, 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 a candle stick that giveth light, in other words. See, I can hold my hand over this one right here, and it's just one, one, one candle power. That, but that would be one candle power. And if I could cut them all off except that one right there, that one candle, that one candle right there uh, would give love enough light for people in, the, in this room to be able to see who's sitting close to you you might not be able to read uh, uh, on your book or anything like that, but you'd be able to see one, 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 one candle power. Amen. But friend, with the collective candles that's around in this room and these lights and everything up there, it makes it real easy to look at you. I can step back from right here. I'm looking back and I'm seeing your faces. Uh, I'm seeing uh, you know, God dealing with your mind and with your heart. Uh, I'm seeing whether you agree with God or not. I'm seeing whether you're not paying attention or not. I'm seeing whether you're asleep or not. Uh, and if there, I mean, you know, uh, uh, that, that, what does it do? Uh, it reveals. The light reveals. And if you have the light of God living down in your heart and soul and you have a pattern uh, of godliness in your life, then your light's going to so shine before a lost and dying world. And then he said over there that what? So that the lost man that's out there in the world might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know what causes Christians to want to be Christians? It's not just as it's not as much as well. I don't want to go to hell. I mean that's good for insurance, friend. Uh, it sure is. I don't want to go to hell. Nobody does. I never think. But I want to be a Christian because there's a place called heaven. And there's very little written in the Word of God. There's some brief descriptions we have in the book of Revelations. And there's some scripture over there that tells us that eyes have not seen, neither is ear heard, neither is it entered into the heart of man. What God has went away to prepare for you and I. Uh, John 14 says over there, he said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, In my Father's house are many mansions. He said, And I go to prepare you a place. I don't know whether I'm going to have a mansion on the other side. I, I, it don't matter to me if, if God just gives me a little corner somewhere or another that I can build my own house. Long as I'm there. I've been a carpenter all my life, and I think carpent being a carpenter is an honorable trade because Jesus Jesus was one. Amen. And uh, and these people out there of, of all different trades and everything like that, but a lot of times us carpenters have been looked down on down through life and they call it rough, rough hard work. It is rough hard work. Uh, and everything. My body's broke down, my shoulders don't work right, and my legs and feet don't work right. Uh, and everything else like it there because of the you know the hard work I've done all of my life backwards and forwards, but I don't regret a mile of it, amen. I don't regret it, but there's also a, another hard work, uh, and, and it's be, it's being a child of God. It's it's not easy to be a child of God in this perverse world that we're living in right now. 
It's not easy because uh, the devil ha- is relentless uh, in his persecution and his attack uh, on us. Uh, and, and, and he's trying his best to destroy uh, the, the word of God and the love of God. And, and he's trying to do away with our pattern. Do away with it. And it takes a lifetime. Let me read just a little bit more to you here. In James chapter, let's go over to the book of James. Says, oh gosh, preacher, you're going to that book where nobody likes uh, and everything. You're going over to the book of James. James is very blunt. He was the brother of Jesus. This is the brother of Jesus, the half brother uh, and everything. He had, a, he had an earthly father and his name was Joseph. And uh, Jesus had a heavenly father and his name was God. Uh, and, uh, uh, but anyway, they had the same mother. Her name was Mary, and Jesus was born of a virgin, and uh, after that Jesus uh, was born, uh, a man, Joseph went to in, into his wife, and she conceived and bare several more brothers and sisters. Jesus had several brothers and half-brothers and sisters. James just happened to be one of them. And it wasn't until after James uh, saw the resurrection of, uh, of his brother uh, that he become a true believer. And James become a true believer, friend, and he and God honored him by putting uh, his book uh, in the canon that we have today, the sword of the Lord or the canon of God's word. And, and listen to what it says. Start reading with me in verse 14 of, of chapter 2. Listen to what it says. Uh, what doeth it profit, profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works, can faith save him? If thy brother or thy sister be naked uh, and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, uh, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding that ye gave them not those things uh, which are needful uh, to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if, if it hath not works, is dead. In other words, it's, you know, you can look at me all day long and tell me that you have faith. Now, I can't see the inward working of your mind and your heart. I can't see your salvation this morning. But by your works or by your fruit, I can know you. By your works and by your fruit, then you and I can hook together. You know, and, and, you know, that hook is through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. It's nothing that you can do. Remember, it's not of works, least any man should boast. Paul said it's the what? Gift of God. God gave us an unspeakable gift, and his name was Jesus Christ. And it was a mystery of the days of old. And Paul, it was a mystery to Paul over there. And God, when God brought it forth, amen, salvation through the blood of that darling son of Jesus, amen. Revelation chapter 5 said, heaven was searched and earth was searched, and no man was found worthy, friend. Uh, but the Bible said over there in that same chapter, the line of the tribe of Judah, friend, uh, prevailed to do what? Uh, amen, to be found worthy. What, did, what was he found worthy of? Amen. Going to the cross of Calvary and shedding his life's blood that you and I might have the perpetual forgiveness of sin down through our lives. Amen. The perpetual forgiveness of it. Yet if any man say thou hast faith and have, and have works, show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that thou art, there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believed and trembled. Let's stop right there on that verse of scripture just for a minute. Uh, friend, did you know this morning that Satan probably got uh, one of the greatest educations of anybody? Honey, he knows the word of God from beginning to end. He knows the thoughts and the imaginations of God. Uh, he, he was with God. Uh, he was the anointed cherubim over there. He was created by God. He knew the plan of God. He knows all things. Amen. He knows every jot and tittle in this book that we have here. Mine is the 1611 King James Version. I have to tell you that everything is exactly perfect about that, I cannot tell you. But one thing that I can tell you this morning, that the power of God through the Holy Spirit of God honors this old book that I preach out of. 
he honors it. Amen. And because God honors it, amen, like it there, uh, the devil knows every comma, every period, every, every, uh, uh, every phrase, every, uh, every verse, every word. He knows it. So how do you know that? Because of that verse of scripture that I read. Even the devils believed and trembled. Amen. They have a knowledge. They have a knowledge this morning. And because you and I most of the time are ignorant to what the will of God is in our lives because of, of uh, because we've not spent time uh, learning what we need to do uh, and we've not listened and we've not heard uh, a lot of times what God's speaking to us and everything over there, we find ourselves trying our best to live a godly life uh, without knowing everything that we need to know. And so we find ourselves failing along the way. We do. We find ourselves failing and everything. But when we do understand and do know and God gives knowledge through the power of the Holy Spirit of God and through the preached word, when you come to that point in your life and everything, what that, what that is, that is, uh, it, it's an awakening. Oh, that's what God meant by that verse of scripture. Uh, I've not been doing that right. You know what the next thing you need to do? Find yourself a place of repentance and say, oh God, forgive me uh, for, I, for I did not know. Now, the Bible says in the days of old, God winked at man's ignorance. Now, that's, what, that's before God gave the law. Before God gave the law, without the law, uh, uh, sin was not imputed to mankind. Before the law was given. The law uh, that God gave over there uh, was, was to do what? To bring us to the knowledge of sin. But through the law and the sacrifice of the Old Testament and everything over there, uh, that law over there wasn't meant to forgive man of his sins. It was meant to roll that sin ahead year after year after year uh, through the high priest and those things that they did over there uh, and everything. They're trying their best to do what they could do to what to a day that they would be a man hang on a cross of Calvary named Jesus over there and shed his blood that all sin might be forgiven. It brought us to that point. Now, when Jesus came down here, he fulfilled the law. Uh, ever jot and tittle of it. He did what God had him to do. He become that perfect lamb, that perfect sacrifice. Uh, Jesus did. And when he, when he done that, uh, he, he set forth a pattern. He set forth a pattern. I, I wish I could, that light was a little bit closer over here so I could see it. But I'll hold this up right here. Now when I hold this up, I've got a light straight above here and everything. It's casting a shadow. Down on the pulpit. It's casting a shadow. What is that? that? That shadow that's on the pulpit, friend, is a pattern of the real thing. This right here is, uh, is a bulletin uh, and everything. And the shadow of this uh, right here uh, on, my, on my Bible and on the pulpit right here, uh, because of the light that shines up there, uh, it's casting a, pat a pattern down here. I can hold my hand up and I can see a pattern of my hand down on, on the floor. I can't pick up that piece of paper right there uh, with that shadow. Amen. You and I are kind of like that uh, to God. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And he wants you and I to be a pattern of good works down here. Amen. But we're weak in, in a lot of ways. Amen. But we know one this morning through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that sits on the right hand of the Father that can do all things. Amen. Paul penned that over there. Uh, over there that you and I in the book of Romans chapter 8 said that you and I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. Amen. And if we'll show forth to the world out there uh, that we are a pattern of the original, which is Christ Jesus uh, and God the Father. It's God in the flesh, friend, if you'll receive it. Uh, amen. How they came down here into this world and made himself a pattern of good works. He became a spotless lamb. That sacrificial lamb that I was talking about over there. And he gave his life. Amen. And he wants us to talk. And I quoted it a while ago for us to what? To take up our cross and to follow him. In other words, let your life become uh, a pattern of good works. Now that's all he's asking for. 
And you know what he said over there in the book of Romans chapter 12? He said over there, he said, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice. Uh, down here in this world. Then he goes on to say in that verse of scripture over there, uh, and, and, and everything up there, and he said that it is what? A reasonable service. It's a reasonable service. That's all it is. And everything. In other words, it, 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 it helps me to get to the point in our lives and everything. The very, 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 very best you and I can do as children of God down here in this world, we are going to come short because we can't get to that point that's, uh, where the shadow is coming from. Amen. The light of God, uh, friends, shines on his son Jesus and then it reflects down here on us and it gives you and I a pattern to go by and it's pinned down here in the word of God, friend. It's pinned down here and everything that we might know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, how to walk, how to, uh, how to do these things, how to have integrity in our life, how to show forth before a lost and dying world who we are. And, we've, and we will fail and come short. You say, well, what do I have to do, preacher? What do I have to do? As a child of God, friend, and everything, if you'll strive, if, you, if you'll strive, like Paul preached over there, and, everything, and he, said, he said over there, he said, I strive for what? The mastery and everything. Now, is anybody here got a doctorate in anything? And everything, you know, in order to get a doctorate in Theology, a doctorate in medicine, a doctorate in science, a doctorate in, in math, you know, being a math, math person. Was that a mathematician? Uh, a doctorate, you know, being that. Yeah, I mean, everything. In other words, that's supposed, that's the pinnacle. A doctorate is, is the pinnacle uh, of, your, of your education down here. And if you strive hard enough, you'll start out with an associate's. Uh, then you'll get a, ba a, a bachelor's degree. Then you'll get a, a master's degree. Then you get what? A doctorate. I think it's four stages you go through. I hope I got that right uh, and everything, but it's four stages. I've got an associate's degree uh, in the ministry. I don't have a doctorate in the ministry and everything, but I got to that point through what? Through time and study and prayer and seeking God's face. That's where I, I you know, got to. I would to God that I could could have continued on and that there, you know, and, and, and kept doing that. But raising a family, working a job, and the pressures of, of pastoring a church, and all of these things, they want a whole lot of time left. So I feel I feel in a little bit. I feel a little insufficient, physically speaking. Physically speaking. A friend, you and I, we have a doctorate's degree, all of us, all of us, through the power of God and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and we have that, amen. And we can show ourselves a pattern of good works in all things out there in the world that's, that's going on. He, he got down there in verse 7, I believe it is. Let me read that. Verse 7, I believe it is. He says, in all things, in all things. Then move on down to verse 9. And he says, and about the middle of the verse, it says, exhort your servants to be uh, obedient unto their own master and to please them well in all things. And then you'll see it down in the last part of chapter 10. Notice what it says. It says, God our Savior in all things and everything. And I thought about that little phrase as I looked on into the word of God and looked at that and everything. I thought, you know, uh, what is all things? That's all things pertaining to the life of Christ. Now, the Bible says over there uh, that they were called Christians first. Where was that? Antioch and everything over there. Why? Because they were Christ-like. In other words, uh, they saw something in those people over there that reminded them of Christ. So they called them Christians. Now I've made this statement and I'll make it again right now before the world and before the church and everything. I prefer to call myself a child of God 
because I feel so insufficient to be called a Christian. A Christian is to be Christ-like. And friend, before God and before this world out here, my pattern is flawed. I never think I'm doing the best I can, but my pattern is flawed. Amen. Jesus is the, is, is the pattern. And, and I fall far short of being like my Savior. Thank God today that we have a Savior that is in, is in the eyes of God perfection. In the eyes of Almighty God, He looks at you and I. When God looks at me, friend, He don't see the broken pattern that's standing here before you. He don't see that. He sees the blood of his darling son, Jesus Christ. And he hears the words from his darling son that says, Father, forgive him. He belongs to me. That's what God's listening to today. And friend, you and I, if we'll strive just a little harder and we'll do a little more and we'll be a little bit more faithful and we'll understand God's word a little more and everything, it takes a lifetime. It does. It takes a lifetime to learn how to live. Now, you older ones know what I'm talking about right now. It does. It takes a lifetime to learn how to live. Because you know what right now? Things that used to, used to, that I used to want and things that I, that I worked hard to try to get and everything like that right there, when Jonah and I was young and, and, and everything like that right there, there was a lot of material things that mattered a lot to us. You know what it is right now? It's just stuff. That's all it is. It's just stuff. You know, I, it, you know I'll be 65 my birthday. And if God grants me a few more years, I'll be tickled to death. Uh, amen. If he grants me a few more years. But I ain't got not one thing at the house that I'm taking with me. I'll be like the guy on the log floating down the river and everything. Naked, I come into this world. Naked, I'm going to leave this world. I'm not taking anything with me other than my salvation, friend. That's it. You know, I don't have anything that I need to hook. Uh, you know, you can buy a casket now if you want to. If you can go ahead and pre-do everything and you can get you a casket that's got a drawer in it that you can pull out to put your treasures in if you want to. But I'll tell you what right now, more than likely, before that they throw the first shovel of dirt on you, that guy that's shoveling the dirt is going to have your treasures. And I can tell you that about right now. Uh, uh, that's a possibility. Just put it that way. Now, they, they, all people ain't like that. They're not on everything. But you're not taking anything with you other than what that you give away down here in this world. And you say, what are you talking about? You've got to give your life away in order to have a life in Christ Jesus to be born again. You've got to give it away. You've got to unload, you've got to unload this thing and say, God, I'm on my way to hell uh, if you don't touch me and save me. Amen. So you've got to die out over there and you've got to be reborn into the family of God. And when you're reborn into the family of God, then he sets you on a road. It's called righteousness. Amen. And David said over in Psalms uh, 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 23 over there that he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And, and it was pinned over in the New Testament church over there and in the New Testament over there that straight is the way and there is the gate and few be that enter therein. You know, those few that's entering in is saved by God's marvelous grace. Those that are double-minded, they're unstable. James penned that. In the book of James, they're unstable in all their ways. There's a lot of church people out there today. I'm talking about the church world, not the church. The church is pure, holy, without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. God's going to present it one day before him to the, his son, Jesus, the church, the bride. He's going to present it. But there's a church world out there today that is deceived through the works of Satan into believing that everything's all right. So how do you know that? One piece of scripture, and I'm going to hush after this one. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. That's the message God's laid on our heart. I appreciate you this morning. I appreciate you being here. Amen. I thank God and praise him for all that he's done. Now, we've got several cases of COVID around here real close, and uh, there is a...
a group of singers. What's what's their name, sis? The Debbie sisters. The, the Debbie sisters? The, okay. Uh, they're going to be in Johnson City. Rich Acres Free Will Baptist Church. Okay, they're going to be there. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to dismiss service tonight. And if you want to go, uh, you know, to that to that service and be with them, I suggest you get there early on everything. And uh, the the little thing that I heard early today, you're going to be blessed by God. Amen. So we will not be meeting here tonight on everything. If you want to go to that, that'll be fine. Anything else on anybody's but at mind? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you, Lord. I thank you and praise you, Father, for all you give. God, I thank you, Jesus, Lord, for strength. And God, I ask you, Father, the Lord, once again, to bless the church. God, let us take this message, Lord, God, to our heart. God, help me, Lord, to perfect my pattern uh, before a lost and dying world. God, I pray and ask you, Jesus, God, to pre- please, God, please, God, touch in our church. And we'll praise you for all you do. Amen and amen. Good day and God bless you is our prayer.